When I play a piece of music, the thing that is the most interesting to me about it is what happens when the music stops. When the music ends, what do we have then? Something that carries on inside of us that makes us different people. That's the great fascination of music, and that continues to be the beautiful mystery it carries forward. MTT. Who would imagine those three little letters could mean so much? That they could represent such artistry, generosity, and heart. I've experienced that magic firsthand, and I've seen it transform so many others who've come under its spell. Hi, I'm Audra McDonald. I've known Michael Tilson Thomas for more than two decades. In fact, I made my Carnegie Hall debut standing on stage beside him over 20 years ago as he led his beloved San Francisco symphony. I've witnessed MTT be many things to many people. A musical guide, a visionary, a teacher and collaborator, an advocate and inspiration, and most importantly to me, a friend. Tonight, we pay tribute to a singular man who over the course of his 25 year run as music director of the San Francisco Symphony has captured the heart of San Francisco, the country and the world. Now, as he wraps up his extraordinary tenure, all of us want to say, thank you, Michael. How we wished the times allowed us to say it here in person, but you, Michael, have shown us how music and stories connect us wherever we are. So in that spirit, we're welcoming people near and far to join in this collective tribute. Your colleagues, friends, admirers, and all your fans tuning in, whose lives you've changed through your dedication and love of music. And I'm going to get a little help tonight from one of your greatest fans and someone I admire deeply as an artist and a kindred spirit my friend, Susan Graham. But first, I wanna sing a song for you, Michael. This song I think represents what you have brought to all of us and what you mean to all of us. This one's for you. The sound of applause is delicious. It's a thrill to have the world at your feet. The praise of the crowd is exciting. But I've learned that is not what makes life complete. There's one thing you can do for the rest of your days that's worth more than applause. The screaming crowds, the bouquets. Make someone happy. Make just one someone happy. Make just one the heart the heart. You sing to one a smile that cheers you. 
One face that lights when it nears you. Someone you're everything to. Fame, if you win it, it comes and goes in a minute. Where's the real stuff in life? We cling to. Once you found them, build your world around them. Make someone happy. Make just one someone happy. Make just one heart for heart. You sing to one smile that cheers you, one face that lights when it nears you. Someone you're everything to fame. If you win it, it comes and goes in a minute. Where's the real stuff in life we cling to? Love is the answer. Someone to Once you found them, build your world around them. Make someone happy. Make just one someone happy. And you will be happy. What exactly do the letters MTT mean to those who know him best? Michael, get ready. Here are members of your San Francisco Symphony family to tell us. MTT is an audience builder who has taught so many to approach music with open ears, an open mind, and an open heart. MTT is a genius. Pure genius. MTT is someone with so much joy and curiosity about life that being in the stage with him makes you feel like a kid in a candy store. Innovation. A rhapsody in blue. Adventurous and fearless. MTT is totally Tomaszewski. An explorer, a philosopher, uniquely intuitive. MTT is dear. Michael, you well know that few people add as much life and as much grace as my co-host for tonight's tribute. She's an inspiration in opera, art song, symphonic music, and you wouldn't believe her chops in karaoke. <laughs> She's been a great friend to the San Francisco Symphony and of course to you, Michael. Your biggest fan, the inimitable Susan Graham. Thank you, Audra. Michael. I'm so happy to join my dear friend in giving you a huge embrace. What a joy and a thrill it's been to collaborate with you in the San Francisco Symphony over the years, to get the opportunity to explore Berlioz, our beloved Mahler, and even a little bit of Gershwin with you. You know, people often ask me what it's like to make music with MTT. How can I describe it? It's, it's like volleying with a tennis pro, because you always demand so much. And in doing so, you make me raise my game. You're incredibly quick, imaginative, spontaneous, but also incredibly thorough. We once spent 20 minutes talking about how to sing a comma. <laughs> You've elevated my awareness by making me always dig deeper. Your lessons have spanned Mahler and James Brown. I mean, what other conductor could find the keys to conducting Stravinsky and Boulez by studying the godfather of soul? only to strike up a friendship with the man himself. And you shed a light on a whole chapter of American musical history by creating an evening about your own grandparents, pioneers of the American Yiddish theater, Boris and Bessie Tomaszewski. 
and then tore up the stage by performing a few numbers yourself. Clearly, you have the genes of an amazing showman, not to mention the mind and dedication of a great teacher and the warmth and heart of a true friend. Collaborating with you is an experience I'll always treasure. And I know I'm not alone. Now I'm happy to introduce another of your devoted collaborators, Gautier Capuçon. My dear Michael, happy birthday for this 25th anniversary. I've been thinking of you and Josh so much over the past weeks. I thought we would celebrate um, together in a little bit different way, of course. Uh, I would uh, was imagining, um, you know, nice uh, restaurants together in Paris and in Lyon. And of course, great music. You're a true musical architect for me. Your vision is just extraordinary and, and what you do for education for all the young people and, and, and for me, even though I'm, I'm not so young anymore, but I want to thank you for all of that. I want to thank you for all the, all the anecdotes, all the um, stories you share with all of us, all your jokes, of course, I'm just talking about the musical ones, but I want to thank you for all of that. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you give us, which is just extraordinary, opening your heart and your soul and your music. So a little taste of Paris for you. Thanks, Gautier. What a lovely tribute to Michael. Now I want to take us back to the fall of 1995. From the very start, MTT created a remarkable creative partnership with the San Francisco Symphony, one that radically transformed the orchestra and, along the way, the landscape of American music. With Michael as music director, a trip to the symphony was to discover the musical spirit of America, side by side with a rediscovery of European masterworks. MTT opened our ears to the American sound of the 20th century. He championed mavericks like Charles Ives, Lou Harrison, Carl Ruggles, Henry Cowell, Meredith Monk, Steve Reich, and John Adams. His adventurous, even audacious concert programs enticed new audiences, challenged conventional approaches to classical music, and captured the daring spirit of San Francisco and beyond.
This is music by Charles Ives, America's contrary musical pioneer and prophet. It's music that veers between tender sentiment and savage chaos. He unleashed the furious forces that are still challenging our ideas of what music can be even today. I used to come up here in the 1970s and after to visit him from time to time, play his music for him, get his thoughts on how it really should go, and ask him what was under the surface of the pieces. Aaron had a great way of singing his music. It wasn't exactly singing. It was more like cheerleading. He'd say. And he seemed to always go for the throat of the pieces, just how direct, how simple, how energetic it needed to be. Michael really understood my father's music and how to conduct it. It's like the greatest way to hear this music. His first season, he did this marvelous thing where he, he said, I, every program I conduct with the orchestra is going to have one piece of music by an American composer. And at the end of his fifth year, he did this festival called American Mavericks. And people flocked to it. It was a wonderful thing. It was a kind of a, a citywide celebration almost. I think I said this in one of my reviews that there were blue hairs of both varieties. You know, the old ladies with the blue hairs and the young punks with the blue hair, rubbing elbows together in this wonderful evening. When Michael ended up doing a series of concerts called American Mavericks, I was like, whoo, shoo, you know, there's a whole, now now we're getting that, that concept more into the mainstream, which I think is something that, as Americans, it's a, uh, we have an amazing tradition of that. So um, I was very, very happy to be part of those concerts. I, I remember them very, very well. So it was two days ago that uh, we premiered the piece we're about to hear this evening. Uh, I Still Dance, a virtuoso opening piece for orchestra written by John Adams, and I'm very honored that uh, it is dedicated to me and to my husband, Joshua Robeson. Uh, okay.
And now, Michael, we have a special moment from two of your friends celebrating you all the way from Munich. Hi, Michael. Hi. <laughs> we so wish we could be there in San Francisco together to celebrate you and celebrate all what you've done in the 25 years with the San Francisco Symphony. And thank you for letting me be a part of it as a conductor, as a resident conductor. As you know, you've been a very influential figure in my life and in the lives of so many other musicians. And I love every single conversation we've had. I love how you focus on, on the drama, on the storytelling of music, on the character, on the emotions, and how you always pushed me to think about the role of a conductor as a communicator. These conversations will always stay with me and uh, also the times when we studied scores together. And I love that you brought me closer to the music of American con composers as well, especially Charles Ives. I know how important Charles Ives has been to you over the course of your career, Michael, and I adore Charles Ives' music also, mostly because um, I really value how he um, incorporated the many aspects of American life into sonic space. And I feel that that is a reflection of you in many ways. Um, the song that we have decided to perform for you was written by Charles Ives. And the poem, it's called Berceuse, uh, Lullaby. And the poem says that even in times when we must rest, uh, the forces of nature still move us and shape us. So in honor of your love of Charles Ives and also in honor of the force that you've played in our lives, we dedicate this song to you. We love you. Thank you, Julia and Christian. What a beautiful lullaby. And how wonderful for you to share music by Charles Ives. Michael, Ives is just one of the composers that you have illuminated for us through your award-winning recordings. What a gift to have that amazing legacy from you in the San Francisco Symphony. In many ways, as such a gifted communicator, you've picked up the mantle from your friend, Leonard Bernstein especially with your ambitious SFS media project known as Keeping Score in nine television documentaries, as well as programs online and on the radio, you've been a passionate and knowledgeable guide for millions of music lovers. You've invited us to peer into the lives and minds of composers like Beethoven, Shostakovich, Copland, and Ives, and to immerse ourselves in performances of their works in the process, many of us rediscovered musical terrain we thought we already knew. Take Mahler, for instance. When you invited me to record the Rückert Lieder with you, I felt that Mahler was speaking to you and through you to me.
Why do you think that when people hear something really beautiful, that they cry? I think it just wakes up feelings and emotions inside our cells that is not touched by words. I, for one, find you to be a beautiful human being, kind and caring, and involved in the depth of life and its huge demands. And your life is music, like it was my grandfather's. And so this speaks to me. I've always known about this town, but it didn't occur to me until I actually came here and began walking around how much the situation is like the kinds of shapes we encounter in one of Mahler's symphonies. This enormous great square right in the middle of it, and then down every street, another little destination of his life with its own special flavor. The synagogue that way, his parents' house and tavern that way, the church where he was a chorister that way, the school he attended every day that way, and of course, in this space, all of the richness of all the military music, the drills, the parades, the different bands competing with one another. Michael has really encouraged the musicians to take risks and to bring the emotional content of the music as close as we can to our audiences. He tells us, sell it, baby. Sell it to the back row of the second balcony. I feel that many of the recordings we've made with MTT and SF Media belong in that pantheon of epic performances, like Stravinsky's Rite of Spring, The Mahler Project, the works of Copeland and Charles Ives and our very own John Adams. Thank you, Michael, for your incredible artistic vision and creativity, for your boundless energy and enthusiasm, for your commitment to us, and for your uncanny ability to communicate the power of symphonic music. We're so lucky that so much of Michael's work lives on in documentaries and recordings. But wow, there's nothing like the electricity of experiencing MTT Live. And what a range of work he's showcased, an expansive selection of orchestral music, opera and Broadway in staged productions, performances with Metallica, shows with dazzling visuals. And I love that Soundbox, that space in the corner of the building, brought in the hipsters with art installations and live music presented with a cool nightclub vibe. Michael, thanks for reimagining what a concert experience can be. It's left a lasting imprint on the music scene in the Bay Area and around the country. And now I get to welcome a fellow mezzo who's joined you on many of your adventurous programs, the stunning Isabel Leonard. Hey, Michael. I have to say, it's really hard to put into words just how grateful I am for your friendship and your guidance and all of the many, many things I've learned from you these past years as we have collaborated in, in so many different projects. I, um, I just want to say thank you for, for all of it. Thank you for welcoming us all into your home and continuing our, our evening of music after performances into the wee hours and just sharing the simple joy of it with each other. That is a 
That's been a rare gift and I really appreciate it. It has created a sense of family and community in me that sometimes it isn't always present as we are all such jet setters all across the world. And I really, I really appreciate it very much. And I am sure that we will catch up some other time to do it again. I have no doubt. Sending you all of the love and all of the music. And I can't wait to see you again. Michael, when I was a teenager, I was, of course, obsessed with classical music, but I was equally enthralled by multimedia performers like David Byrne and Laurie Anderson, and I never thought those two worlds could combine until I met you. Uh, the minute I started working with you, you pulled me into your projects, which were so amazing. The first ones I remember were the stage productions of operas like Malada. And there I saw you talk to stage designers, choreographers, lighting designers, video artists, just like you would to a musician. You were equally conversant in so many different languages of art and performance. And it really kind of blew my mind. Then you moved on to Soundbox. And I was so happy to be with you when you invented an entirely new experience of classical music, one that somehow balanced drinks and socializing with the most intense and rapt listening you could possibly imagine. You've also expanded my mind and helped me connect the dots in a way that I didn't know that I could. So I can conduct a Beethoven symphony one day, 
and then sit down and talk to Metallica about the stage design and help them make it better. And I couldn't have done that without you. Hey everyone, Lars Ulrich here. MTT, congratulations on an incredible run here in San Francisco and with the orchestra. Thank you for what you've done for the city. Thank you for what you've done for the Bay Area. Thank you for what you've done for Northern California. Thank you for being a collaborator on Metallica's SNM2 project. And looking back on the last 20 years, thank you for every time you or Josh reached out and told me and my gang to come down and check out this performance, this symphony, this Mahler piece, or whatever was coming up, never really knowing what to expect, but always knowing it would be an otherworldly experience. Thank you, Michael, for being who you are and personifying to me everything that San Francisco represents to all of us who are fortunate fortunate enough to live in this incredible city, but also what San Francisco represents to the world. Much love, see you soon. Thanks, Lars. And Michael, we haven't even gotten to your own music yet. So I'm thrilled to spotlight your work as a composer. In your pieces for orchestra, chamber groups, piano and voice, you show us your heart, your wit, and your generosity. I'm not the only one who loves what your music reveals. Here is one of my dearest friends. Hi, I'm Renee Fleming. I wanted to give a fantastic greeting to Michael Tilson Thomas. Michael, you know that you are a dear, beloved friend of mine, of the whole world. You are America's greatest communicator about music and the arts. And I myself have been privileged to have some incredible experiences with you. Uh, one of the, the experiences that I really love is your composition, is the song cycle that I was able to premiere a long time ago. I just love your writing. I mean, you're one of these multi-gifted men who can conduct, compose, create films, who has an extraordinary history, and you and Joshua are the greatest home entertainers I have ever met. I have never felt so welcome in your home environment, whether it's in San Francisco or in Miami. Um, great food, great company, gorgeous history, gorgeous environment, and your beautiful dogs. And I just adore you. I want you to have many, many, many more years of conducting all over the world. I hope to be part of it, and I'm sending greetings, love, respect, admiration, and above all, gratitude. Hear, hear, Renee. And Michael, I'm so excited that the first recording of From the Diary of Anne Frank, narrated by Isabel Leonard, has just been released. What a haunting work you wrote for UNESCO. And I love that your narrator for the world premiere back in 1990 was none other than the legendary Audrey Hepburn. That new recording also includes your Meditations on Rilke, featuring two incredible artists who premiered the work with you last January bass baritone Ryan McKinney, and mezzo-soprano Sasha Cook. Sasha joins us now. Hi, Michael. Sending so much love to you. I wanted to sing one of your songs because I thought that might be the best way to express my feelings for you, which are hard to sum up in a short introduction. 
this song, Not Everyone Thinks That I Am Beautiful, also has your words, of course. And a few years back, we were performing this together for a small group of friends at the symphony. And right before I came on stage, you introduced me and said that you define your life by before and after meeting me, which was incredibly special. And the other thing about those words is that I feel the same way about you. We've done so much together. I have so many amazing memories. And one of the distinctive characteristics of all those memories really is your generosity and unconditional support and the feeling that you've found beauty in me. So this song feels like the right thing to share. And the thing that's wonderful about Michael's music is the directness, the simplicity. There is a lyricism, but it feels conversational at the same time. And these lyrics are very special, so I hope you enjoy. Sasha, that was gorgeous. Wow, Michael, you do have a way with words. I know you love poetry. Renee mentioned some of your settings, which have included Walt Whitman for baritone Thomas Hampson and the Dickinson piece, which Renee premiered. And speaking of Emily Dickinson, we have a special treat. The world premiere of a new song featuring her poetry that MTT composed for tonight performed by the spectacular soprano, Misha brugger gossman Hey there, Michael. Congratulations on so much that you've accomplished and will continue to accomplish. I have been humbled and honored to be able to orbit your planet. 
I've been honored by not just one, but two pieces that you have written for me, four preludes on Playthings of the Wind, and now nobody sent to Emily Dickinson. Thank you for letting me share your love of Emily Dickinson. I hope we do many, many, many more pieces together. And on behalf of Carrie and Jeremy Van Slyke, who are the violist and pianist in the Nobody with me, we thank you. We thank you for how generous you are. Brava, Misha, and Sasha for your beautiful performances. Michael, what a gift to hear the premiere of your new piece tonight. But that's MTT. Selfless is a great word to describe him, especially his commitment to teaching and supporting others. He has made education and mentoring a foundation of his life's work. With the symphony, MTT has brought the experience of music deep into the lives of kids, families, and communities. And his personal devotion, encouragement, and involvement has lifted up new generations of artists, instrumentalists, singers, composers, and conductors. In one case, it all started with a fan letter from a nine-year-old admirer, a fan who grew up to be the music director of the Louisville Orchestra, and as it happens, the youngest conductor to lead a major American orchestra. Hi, Michael. It's so wonderful to be celebrating your 25 years at the San Francisco Symphony with you. I remember when I was nine years old, I saw my very first orchestra concert. It was you conducting the San Francisco Symphony. And so I did something a little wacky. I wrote you a very, very long letter. I didn't think that I'd ever hear back from you, but I did. And you wrote me a letter that, that I still think about all the time. And I was incredibly lucky because just a couple of years later, when I was 11, I joined the San Francisco Symphony Youth Orchestra. And all these years since then, I've thought about your leadership, a model for service, a model for what it means to be a musician that devotes their life to sharing this music with everyone. So thank you, Michael, for the extraordinary gift that you've given to all of us. You're an incredible friend and a person that I love dearly. Never apologize for being who you truly are. 
This is the first thing you told me, Michael, when we met in New World Symphony back in 1998. I was very green about playing an orchestra, and so my journey has begun. You have given me an incredible gift and many opportunities to work with many wonderful coaches and concertmasters of the world orchestras, shaping and molding us as a mentor and guide, as a teacher and friend, always inspiring to be unique and different and never be afraid to take risks and be bold. Then when I went and joined the San Francisco Symphony, our journey continued with many projects like keeping score and exploring with my father's folk music, from Mahler to Metallica, from Soundbox to Kennedy Center Honors. You've been behind it all. May it be wild and crazy at times, but never boring and dull for sure. Of course, there have been many grand triumphs and big victories, but it is those quiet moments and seemingly insignificant times when a soft phrase, a simple sound, or a wink in your eye, a drop of tear, or maybe even a silence in our hearts, where music became like an ornament to that silence. It is those precious moments that I will cherish the most. I've been playing with San Francisco Symphony since when I was 17, so it's been 11 years. And every year I've been with Michael and we were on tour. We're both of a mind to kind of look into the music and say, what are the possibilities here? The soloist definitely is the leader. There is a, an element of excitement and danger to it. If you were watching the circus and you're watching a trapeze act, there's the person who's doing the flips and the somersaults, and there's the other person who's catching them. In this case, I'm the catcher. Taking his friends to exciting new musical places is part of who Michael is and what he does. Some time ago, he created a jazzy composition for one of his protégés. It imagines two longtime flirts attempting to express their feelings in a noisy club. Now, to perform the appropriately named You Come Here Often, <clears throat> the extraordinary artist for whom it was written, ladies and gentlemen, Yuja Wang.
Thank you, Yuja. What an honor for both of us to help celebrate our dear friend that night. So, how to possibly sum up MTT? Well, for me, he has been a champion, a guide, a fellow traveler on an amazing trail. Michael, thank you for inviting this then aspiring young singer from Fresno to sing best with you at Carnegie Hall. In the 20 years since that unforgettable experience, what a joy it's been to collaborate with you. Perhaps no time more gratifying than in San Francisco three years ago. What an inspired stroke of genius. Instead of going on tour to a state that had just enacted discriminatory LGBTQIA legislation, together we celebrated the music of gay composers in a Symphony Pride concert instead. There we stood on the Davies Symphony Hall stage singing Laura Nero's Save the Country. Come on, people, come on, children, come on down to the glory river. Gonna wash you up and wash you down. Gonna lay that devil down. Gonna lay that devil down. Remember? The song ends with, we could build the dream with love. What better words with which to introduce one of my favorite artists and people, Yo-Yo Ma. Michael, only you could make me work so hard. On all the most difficult repertoire that you love so much and that I love so much, but it's your willpower and your charisma and your magnetism that makes people do things for you because you literally give the shirt off your back, and you know what I mean, uh, to not only the San Francisco Symphony, but to the whole community around you, and that includes everybody in our sector. So to you today, we want to honor you and to thank you for giving your heart and soul, blood, sweat, and tears over a quarter of a century to the San Francisco Symphony. And we celebrate the legacy that you leave behind for generations to come. So we love you and many, many more years of fun and forcing other people to do things. Michael, would you be embarrassed if I called you an icon? Well, it's not just me that thinks so. There is a whole chorus of people that feel the same way I do. Michael, you are an American treasure. Your musical brilliance and visionary leadership have strengthened and enriched the artistic fabric of our nation and built the San Francisco Symphony into one of the finest orchestras in the world. Your commitment to musical excellence while exploring innovative ways to engage new young audiences has created countless one-of-a-kind artistic experiences that have brought joy and entertainment to our beautiful city and throughout the world. Every time I saw you, I learned something new. Every time I played with you, I learned something new. But it's not in the past, I think we're just beginning. Hi, Michael. I'm so proud and delighted to be part of this tribute to you and be able to thank you publicly and privately for the incredible gift you've given us in the Bay Area, performing some of the most amazing music I've ever heard in my life. You've definitely upped my game and all of us who get to be lucky enough to have heard these Mahler concerts and so many, too many to mention. I love that you're friends with James Brown. I love that you are loving country music and un being such so present in so many different parts of the culture here in the Bay Area. I just want to thank you for a quarter of a century of leadership, most importantly, empowering other people's voices so that they could be heard. Always, as you say, being inside the music and outside, always present, but more importantly, allowing people to be fully expressive, the personification of leadership. Contrast that to the world that we're currently living in. Our world, the music world in San Francisco, has been changed for the better. Uh, and I just want to congratulate you on behalf of not just a grateful city, 
wearing my former hat as mayor, but on behalf of a grateful state. Congratulations to you after a wonderful, almost what feels like a lifetime of work with the symphony. I know you're moving on to something new and exciting, and Sonny and I wish you so much happiness in that. So, what can I say? Appreciation, admiration, and love, and always the very best wishes from my heart to both you and Josh. From Khancha, no Khancha, no Khancha, beshine the guns of Go make this total. Michael, thank you for everything you've done for our city, for the San Francisco Symphony, and for the world of music. You have shared your talents with our community from the podium of Davies Symphony Hall to our classrooms. Congratulations on 25 amazing years. Michael, we love you so much. While you have received many awards and accolades, including 11 Grammys, a Peabody Award, the National Medal of Arts, it was my privilege to nominate you for your richly deserved 2019 Kennedy Center Honor, a fitting tribute to a brilliant career. I congratulate you and I send you my best wishes and mazel tov. Good luck. We love you very much. I'll never forget your mastery of making the best chocolate bread pudding. God bless you. Thank you so much. And I will see you around the neighborhood. It's been 30 years of pure and utter joy. I'm going to sing one little ditty for you. When we did a recital with Audra, Got a little rhythm, a rhythm, a rhythm that pitter pats in my brain. Someday I'll walk up to it and then I'll talk up to it. I hope it listens when I say, I love Michael. <laughs> I couldn't have said it better myself. How many people get to have their praises sung literally and otherwise? by the likes of those movers and shakers. But MTT, sit back. Here's a little more. Michael Tilson Thomas is mischievous. An incredibly great musician, a wonderful human being, and he has the rare distinction of being both an elder statesman and a maverick at the same time. MTT is love. MTT is charismatic a force of nature. All about the poodles. Generosity. Wonderful, marvelous. Michael is my husband. MTT is a magician whose inner world is revealed through music. MTT is super califragilistic. Dexmialidocious, yes. MTT is Mahler. Michael, today is the day we would be on stage together performing Mahler's Eighth Symphony in your final concert as music director. I personally want to thank you for so many years of creative and innovative leadership here. And since we cannot be here together to play Mahler with you, instead, we'd like to play Mahler for you. Thank you for everything you've done.
Bravi. Thank you all for that powerful performance. Michael, you often ask the question, what remains with a listener when the music ends? Well, you've left me with a richer appreciation of life. Your energy on the podium, your physicality on the podium, I mean, your wingspan alone, it all intensifies what the composer is seeking to express. You have a way of elevating music so that we feel higher levels of joy and deeper explorations of sorrow. Oh, Michael, I hope all of us have shown you just a little of what you have meant to all of us. You've shown us how music brings us together, helps us to better understand our world, and reminds us what it means to be alive. You ignite passion, and you awaken us to possibility. And for me, that has meant an explosive kind of freedom. So thank you. Thank you for inspiring us and sharing all that with me and with all of us. Audra, what else can we say? Susie, I'm so glad that you and I got to help honor our remarkable friend. What a wonderful cavalcade of surprises. Thank you so much, Audra. Thank you so much, Susan, for being such wonderful hosts and bringing your bright spirits and generous, warm approach to life to every moment of this. You have so many things on your mind, so many things to think of that you would spend time to gather this all together is much appreciated. I really thank you. And I always have so many people to thank. I have to say that at the end of nearly every evening that I've been music director here in San Francisco, I thought, oh, there's still a few more people I forgot to thank. So let me see if I can remember. Of course, I have the greatest of thanks for my incredible colleagues on stage with whom I've shared so much. We've come to such an amazing understanding of music and I think probably things about ourselves too in the process of working together. It's been a really transformative experience and sharing a lot of deepening perspectives on all of music and all of what it's about. And of course, the incredible chorus, uh, the professionals in the chorus and the volunteers in the chorus, both of whom have been so amazingly devoted to taking on an incredible breadth of repertoire from the 11th century to uh, the shrieks and cries of the last couple of weeks. And of course, our amazing crew that deals with us with such patience and makes everything work so smoothly and the amazing library and the whole extraordinary staff and the great managements that I've worked with, including Peter Pastreich and Brent Osink and now Mark Hansen and my wonderful presidents, Nancy Bechtel and John Goldman and Sakurako Fisher. And we've all done different things together, expanded the vision together in different ways. And I do feel that there have been lots of moments that we've been together where at that moment on stage, in that evening, in that week, as that repertoire was premiered or brought to life again in a completely new way, that we were right there on the cutting edge of what the performing arts are supposed to do, of being a living testimony of keeping these great and noble ideas going forward and all those truths that were formerly held to be self-evident, which our music at its best witnesses so profoundly. It's been a great honor to do all of this with you. And I'm looking forward in the years ahead from my perhaps slightly calmer and more august position as uh, music director laureate to continue to share with you my perspectives, attention, affection, all of which are there for you all forever. So stay safe and till very soon. Oh, Michael, now I'm flooded with so many memories. San Francisco, that beautiful, iconic city by the bay. San 
Francisco. <laughs> 